This lesson is on fraction equivalence and comparing fractions. So there are four main ideas in this lesson, equivalent fractions, simplest form, benchmark, and common denominator. So we'll go through each one and give one example and walk you through the steps of how to understand each of these ideas. So the first one will be equivalent fractions. This one, um, I always like visualizing pizza because pizza is the best and it's very easy to tell how much pizza you want if you were to cut it into pieces to have a good feeling of portions compared to the whole amount. So fractions are always comparing a part of something to how much you have possible. So let's imagine that we have a rectangle pizza and right now you order it and it's only cut into two pieces. So when we write our fraction to represent this, it's going to be uh, written like this. And let me actually lightly shade in the pizza. And that will let us know that we are going to have one piece out of the possible two pieces. So to write that as a fraction, we have the whole amount on the bottom and the possible amount on the top, how much we're getting. So when we have equivalent fractions, we're basically not changing the amount we have, we're only changing how we name it. So if I wanted to cut my pizza into more pieces, but each time I cut it, it has to be equal sizes. So right now these are each the same size. Let's say I want to cut it again, and I'm going to cut each one of these pieces again. So there's another cut, and there is another cut. So now there's, again, all equal sized pieces. I didn't change how much I, how much I shaded. That amount is still the same. What I did change is the size of the pieces. So now if I were to name this model, I would say, well, how many pieces do I have possible? I have four pieces that are possible. And how many are shaded? There are two that are shaded. Are these two fractions equivalent? Are they the same amount? Yes, because the amount that I shaded did not change. So these are equivalent. <clears throat> if I wanted to do this more and cut the pieces even further, I would cut it in again, trying to keep them all equal sizes. And I can ask myself, did I change the amount that I shaded? No, that part is the same. All I did was change the size of the pieces. So now I ask myself, well, how many pieces are there possible? And that's always the denominator, the bottom number. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now there are eight possible pieces. And how many are shaded? There are four that are shaded. So my equivalent fa fraction is four out of eight. So this is the basic idea of what it means to have an equivalent fraction. The next step would be to understand how to do that mathematically without having to draw a model. <clears throat> so the idea of this is let's go back to one half. Let's say we have one half and I want to uh, have, have you tell me two or three other equivalent fractions. Basically what's going on between each of these is that we're multiplying. And we're multiplying by a number that doesn't change the value. So in math, what can we multiply by that doesn't change the value of something? I'll go down here. Let's say we have 3 times something still gives me 3. What can I multiply by that doesn't change the value of this? Well, I multiply by 1. So multiplying by 1 is something you can do. That doesn't change the value. So if I go back to my fraction and I want to multiply it by 1, but I don't want to change how much I shaded, what would that look like? So I'm going to multiply it by 1. How do you represent 1 in fractions? Well, it's the same number in the numerator and the denominator. So let's pick any number, really. Let's say I did 3 and 3. 3 over 3 is the same as saying 1. I'm just representing it as a fraction. If I did this, what I would get on the top is 3, and what I would get on the bottom is 6. So 3 out of 6. Okay. Let's say I want to multiply it by something that we've done up here. 
So if I want multiply the top and the bottom by four. <clears throat> Multiplying the top and the bottom, the numerator and the denominator by the same number, doesn't change the value because this is just saying multiply it by one. What it does is it changes the number of pieces. I'm basically cutting it into more and more pieces. So the answer to this equivalent fraction would be I would have four as the numerator and eight as the denominator. So that would basically represent this model. So what I did here is I started with one half and then I multiplied it or I cut it into pieces that are now four. And then I see, well, how many are shaded? Four are shaded out of the eight possible pieces. So this is one way that you can show your thinking is by writing it by multiplying a fraction with the value of one, but it can really be any number of pieces. If I wanted to multiply this by 10 over 10, I would just end up cutting my pieces into smaller and smaller pieces, but it still wouldn't change the area that is shaded. So when we do equivalent fractions, let's say we have one half again, and I want to get an equivalent fraction, I can choose any number I want. So let's, again, I can do six if I want. As long as I keep the numerator and denominator the same, that means I am only multiplying it by one, which doesn't change the value. That's the most important part. So this part here, it, you, I mean, if the problem doesn't tell you exactly what to do, it only asks you to find an equivalent fraction, you can pick any number you want. So for example, this one would be six over 12. So this is an equivalent fraction, six over 12 as one half. That means if I had a pizza that's only cut into two pieces and I take one of them, I'm getting half the pizza. If I have a pizza and it's cut into 12 pieces and I take six of those pieces, that's half the pizza. So the value is the same. Now there's another way you can write this, which we've done in class if you wanna do that. And that is to show Let's see, we're going to another uh, equivalent fraction. We can show a little arrow like this, and I say, hmm, what did I do to get from 2 to 12? I multiplied it by 6, and that means what will I do to get from 1 to 6? I will multiply it by 6. So just two ways that you can write it depending on your preference, but the idea is that you are multiplying by the value of 1, with any number. Now let's say a problem asked you to tell if two fractions were equivalent or not. So let's say one, e uh, one fraction was one over three and they're asking you to put an equal sign or an inequality sign for four over 12. So what you would ask yourself is you would say, okay, can I multiply the denominator by a number that is the same as the numerator? Because that would mean I am keeping the value the same. So what do I do to get from 3 to 12? Well, I multiply that by 4. And what do I do to get from 1 to 4? I multiply that by 4. So if I did the same thing on the numerator and the denominator, then that means that these two fractions are equivalent. Let's say I have another fraction comparison like two fifths, and I wanna know, is that equivalent to six over 10? So I would ask myself again, hmm, how did I get from five to 10? Well, I multiplied that by two, then how did I get from two to six? I multiplied that by three. So is the numerator and the denominator the same? No, that means that I am not multiplying by one, which means I'm changing the value. So this is not equivalent.